Introducing you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing green trunks with white trim, joining us all the way from Blois, France. He weighed in at a ready 166 pounds. His record stands at 36 wins, three losses with five knockouts. Here is the European super middleweight champion and the current WBA number one ranked contender, introducing Bruno Girard. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks with gold trim, fighting out of it, representing his home of Ozark, Alabama. He weighed in at 167 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with 20 wins, no losses, 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is making the first defense of his title. Here is the defending WBA super middleweight champion of the world, known as the Hammer from Bama, the undefeated Byron Gator Mitchell. Once again, Elmo Adolf, our referee in charge, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled. All right, centering, centering, centering. All right, gentlemen, the chief second, the chief second over here. All right, we all right, we're a little bit high over here, but we're all right. You know we've given you instructions as far as all of the rules that we're going by. I want you to pay attention to my commands out here. Oh, if I tell you something about something that you're doing, don't do it again. Understand? Understand. Come in. Okay. okay. Understand. Let's go. Shake hands, come out boxing. Well, is this going to be batting practice for the power hitting Byron Mitchell? 11 of his 16 knockouts have come in the first round. 14 of those 16 in three rounds or less on a six fight KO streak. And the feeling is Gerard, in order to win, if he hopes to win, he's got to take Mitchell deep. If Gerard manages to knock out Mitchell, it'll be quite a story. Only five of his 36 wins by knockout. None of his knockouts in round one, none in three rounds or less. However, his last knockout in his last fight. So here we go. Gerard, a boxer in the truest sense, more of a defensive tactical fighter when Byron Mitchell uh, just relies on that tremendous power. Good sharp jab by Mitchell. Sharp, right between the gloves. Power certainly could be one of the bigger differences in this fight. Also, I think the movement, the Americanization type of things that the Europeans haven't gotten to yet. Byron Mitchell, he's here, he's there. You swing, you miss, and all of a sudden you get hit from an angle you don't recognize. I think that's also going to be key. They bend so much from uh, American fighters bend and, and use the uh, the leverage that they comes off the man and, the, and the other guys fight like they got some kind of iron rod up their back. They don't bend over at all. They just stand there and take shots. Perseverance also very important. A big strength for Byron Mitchell in the blue and Mitchell comes out throwing bombs. Those are wicked shots showing tremendous hand speed as well. Look how low he gets out of a deep crouch. You see, the power is going to be big too because I believe Gerard's not going to be able to hold Mitchell off. When Mitchell comes in, even when he eats one, it's not going to hurt so much as to give him any concerns, and that's going to be really dangerous for Gerard. As mentioned, 11 first round KOs for Byron Mitchell. He looks like he's trying to make a 12 right now. He seems to be overthrowing a little bit here early, especially with the right hand. He's very over anxious. He's got the crowd behind him. He's. Uh, you know, from Alabama. Now let's go break. A lot of folks Please. from those Please. parts get here. Get out, get out. And they're behind Byron Mitchell, the WBA super middleweight champion, 20 and 0 with 16 knockouts. Here's a Gerard with a bit of a flurry, but those were blocked by the hands of Mitchell. Yeah, those were useless punches, but he, he's got to get something in to show this guy he's, he's here to fight. I mean, now let's go break. Step back, please. Mitchell Step with back. a crowd pleasing style. One can never count this exciting youngster out. He was behind against Frankie Lyles and came back in furious uh, fashion in the 11th round with three knockdowns. You know, when you look at the types of these two guys, one guy looks like a fighter, he's got the body, and the other guy looks like a basketball player. I mean, look, he's tall and thin. Here's the jab followed up by the right, but the right missed by Mitchell. Mitchell's missing a couple of big shots he doesn't have to, and a few good sharp counters back by Gerard. Not real powerful, but back. Ooh. Windmilling by Byron 
Mitchell. Mitchell's and the right uppercut is putting everything in those punches. If one of those things lands, that's going to be the end. I mean, he is throwing some very heavy levels. I don't think I've ever seen him throw anything that heavy in the first round. Especially that often. Ooh. And Mitchell's got strong legs, too. He gets a lot of that power from the legs. And, you know, I don't think I get the message Mitchell is not going to be here at the late rounds. He's going to, he wants to leave now. Right hand just missed by Byron. Work his jab and work his body. Don't forget his body. Work his jab and work his work work, 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 work the body. Everything behind the jab. Keep the jab working. Double up on it sometime and bang that body and back to the head. You hear me now? But work that jab. Don't forget the uppercuts when you're down low. You know up, up. Natalie, the lovely Natalie, will be our translator. Ça va durer deux, trois rounds. Huh? Okay. He's going okay. to be very fast for two or three rounds. You know that. So you have to be with your hand very up. Okay. Two or three rounds. Mark So Lamel, a former policeman uh, in the corner, the trainer for uh, Bruno Girard from France. And now we enter round two. Good pace in round one. Byron Mitchell certainly doesn't want to fall behind early as he did against Frankie Lyles. Well, he's not, this, they've, they've almost conceded the first two or three that have the French corner. That they told him, just hold on for two or three rounds. Keep your hands up. Just hold on. We know he's going to be fast, but then he'll slow down in round four or five. You know, in the meantime, this guy's got to absorb this kind of punch. To a great degree, I think, though, the corner's right. He can't match Mitchell's speed early. He can't match his power in any round. If he makes a miss, some of those big shots early, he can slow him down a little bit. And I think it's key that the Frenchman comes forward. If he's coming forward, Mitchell's at a little bit of a disadvantage being on the shorter end of the height reach here. He's blocking all those left hooks is Byron Mitchell. Yeah, but Bruno's throwing him. I mean, the point is he's, he's not just standing there taking shots. He, he's, he's coming on himself. Byron Mitchell coming in uh, with a reputation of lacking defense that he's quite hittable, tends to bite his time looking to load up with one big shot. But uh, a little more balanced out and even here in the first few rounds against uh, Bruno Girard. Of course, Girard, uh, more of a boxer, doesn't have the big knockout uh, power. I break, step back, break. That Byron Mitchell has, although uh, Louis Sacaris, uh, the manager of Girard, said he can win by decision, can also win by knockout. Started boxing at 11, never a knockout fighter, but has lots of experience. He's ready to make it any kind of fight. He's here not to fight as an amateur, but as a professional. That's a nice uppercut. That's a nice jab. That's a nice hook. That's three good punches in a row. But he's loading up on every one of them, Ferdinand. That's not the proper way to get it done. Yep. And Stephen his corner says, stop him one time. Work him behind the jab and set it up, and that's correct. He's bleeding from either the nose or, yeah, he's bleeding from the nose. Though. I mean, those are hard shots, Bobby. I mean, those are one, any one of those can knock you out. A lot of red around oh, the face right of the Frenchman, Bruno Girard. No, 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 result no, no, of those uh, tough punches by Byron Mitchell. Blood all over his face now, Girard. Very ugly sight. And pitter-patter punches that are having no effect on Mitchell. Well, that's the danger of coming in when you're, you're not a knockout puncher. I mean, like... You got a bucket, no water in it. What? Are you going to put out the fire? But he's Gerard got actually, Gerard actually spread the blood all over his own face by wiping his nose and touching yeah, his yeah. forehead. That, that's how the blood got them, of course. Look, look at him going toe to toe. At least he's going. He's hanging top. He's trying to trade, which is probably a major mistake. A very major mistake. Oof. Big whiff there by Byron Mitchell. Well, if he connects with one of those, forget about it. His nose is really bothered him. I'm Final 10 seconds of round two. Gerard continues to bounce around, but a bloodied Bruno Gerard gets back to his corner. His mother can barely look. She, during the fight, she was looking away and could not stand the sight of her uh, son's bloodied face. I remember when my mom watched my fights, it bothered me more when she cried when I got hit. Yeah. It's not a good place for parents. Right. So <laughs> you got to pass a law, no parents until it's over with. 
Mitch has been unloaded with some heavy done. shots. Okay. They were going to take a good okay. shot at the right hand. He is firing that right hand. They're using a user jab. Beautiful right uppercut on the inside. That's probably what busted the nose open. Terrific shot. And we'll watch him again. He comes in behind the jab, doesn't land with the jab, but rips that uppercut right on the nose. I wouldn't be surprised to see that's broken. Because when it starts to pour blood like that, it means you're broken. You pop. Byron Mitchell ready to begin round three. Fires the jab. Let's see if he follows it up with the right. And that is bothering. The nose is bothering. He, he, he keeps pawing at it. It's it not going to help. It's hurting and it's bleeding. Mitchell playing now. The face immediately gets totally bloodied of Bruno Gerard. Blood coming from the nose. That's some target, huh? From Byron Mitchell. Oh. That was a beautiful right uppercut. And I'll tell you what, if you land a little more cleanly, we might have a short, short night. Blood all over Mitchell's gloves, the result of Gerard's face. Power just such a big difference. The disparity in strength and power here is it's just huge. Gerard trying to answer back with left hooks to the head, but just not enough. See, Gerard cannot get any of Mitchell's respect, Stephen. If he doesn't get any of that respect, Mitch is going to walk to him and do whatever he pleases. And that's what he's done so far. It's, he, he, let's go, left fight, break, step you can't back. disrespect step Gerard. Back, he's he's trying hard, but he's just not in the same class as this guy. He hasn't got the power. He hasn't got the wherewithal to get the respect, as Bobby says, to keep him off. Get some respect so he just doesn't walk in. Gerard, former French champion, current European champion. Rated number one by the WBA, number three by the BC, number five by the IBF. Well, you know, he's shown a pretty good chin. He's taken a few decent wraps. He's come back. He's shown that he's not going to just quit. He's tried to fire back, but he just doesn't have the guns to keep Mitchell up. He's courageous as we approach the final minute of round three. They go to the body and then upstairs, but not phasing the champion. Mitchell has hardly broken a sweat. And a little dance step. Mitchell loafing away the last minute. Taking some time off here with 40 seconds remaining in round three. He's eating a couple of jabs, but even that, the jabs are not stiff, they don't hurt. Another soft right hand on the temple. Straight right hand by Mitchell, but it fell short. Oh, break, break, step back. Gerard step able back to clean. duck away from step that one. Clean. Mitchell wants to finish big, take the round for sure. He's got it. When a fighter can punch and has no fear oh, of your punch, break that's it. a step very bad clean. place to be in if you're the guy who is not being feared. Gerard's <laughs> got some defense, and then he tries to uh, throw a combination at Mitchell. Gerard with a lot of will. End of the third. Moga, Moga said Gerard, who is the, the mom of uh, Bruno, look at, look at the reaction. She just can't watch. She shouldn't be here. It's very disheartening. It's the last round. She made the trip over from uh, France uh, to watch her son and support her son, but it's very, very difficult for her to watch. For obvious reasons. My friends and I used to bet on which round my mom would get sick in the week. Really? So it's just we understand that they get too emotional. You live in an exotic world of boxing. <laughs> of betting in New Jersey, if you can get to betting on mothers leaving. Strange people. The over-under. <laughs> the over-under and your leaving. mother leaving. All right, here we go. Just Round the four. guys in the dressing room. I see. Well, let's see how many seconds it takes for that face to get bloodied again. 
What are the odds on that? Here goes Mitchell. Pouring it on, but missing with most of those shots. Most of the shots are missing. One or two of them are landing. But he's really missing the majority of it. All he needs to really do is sit on his punch and sit down. When he goes back and looks at the tape, he'll see if he double jab, right hand to the body, left to hook up, or left hook or uppercut underneath. He can make this a whole lot easier. Very anxious, huh? A little too over anxious right now. Well, it's first title defense. He right. wants to be impressive. He has a guy, I believe in his mind, he knows can't hurt him. There's no concern with that. So he just wants to do whatever it is he's doing. And his mindset may be such that he just can't shift into that next gear. You think at times he may be thinking to himself, you know what, I'm hitting him with everything I've got. This guy won't even go down. I don't think so because he's hitting him one at a time. He just walked into a nice right hand. Yeah. Back comes Gerard. Nailed him with a left hook. That was his best punch of the fight. There. Get out of there. Get out of there. Referee Elmo Adolf in control just talks to him in the, in the back. Of it. Two good fighters. They, they do what he says. Those punches punch just don't have punch. enough pop by, by Gerard. He's got these long, tall, you know, basketball player legs, and, and he, when he starts to move away, boy, you got to run after him to catch him to land a punch. And that's why he's been getting away from this one. Those big legs start moving back, you can't catch him. I'll give him points for courage and will and heart and guts. Have put bleeding in there. A few points for a pint of blood as well. So far. Yeah. You know what? Right now he's trying to force the action, trying to make his presence felt by Mitchell, but just doesn't hit hard enough to give Mitchell concern. And right now, the lack of concern Mitchell has is actually hurting Mitchell because he's not doing what he needs to offensively. He's disrespecting him. He's, he's getting lazy. He's just saying, go ahead and hit me. It doesn't hurt. But he can blow around this way. Of course, he's way ahead. But it's, a, it's a much better round for Gerard. It's the best different. round he's had. Because the other guy got lazy on him. Look at the look of determination on Gerard's face. He doesn't want to be embarrassed. Mitchell continues to miss most of those shots. A much better round for the Frenchman Bruno Gerard coming forward with some offense. Throwing combinations. Those last few punches were blocked by Mitchell. Gerard may have stolen the round. Uh, he, did he, work. he did on mine. Come on, peace out of there. Get some air, get some air, get some air. Come on. Now listen. You're making it into a war, baby. Huh? Listen, don't be standing there waiting. Huh? Don't be standing there waiting. Get on and get out. You hear me now? Huh? Give me some, come on, give, come on. Gerard is trying to get back in it, and again, because Mitchell's loaded up and missed so many, he throws a right hand, a left hook. Comes back, another right hand. Not all of them landed cleanly, but then Mitchell fires and comes up empty. So at least the sequence goes to Gerard. And there were a few times, as we look at it from the overhead, that Gerard is effective. There's a jab, a right hand, a hook, doesn't land real clean. Another right hand is grazing. But Mitchell, a lot less, and nothing lands at all. Gerard making a fight of it in that round. Now, if he could turn this round here around and win it cleanly, we have ourselves a fight. Gerard showing a very good chin, aside from a terrific ticker. He's very strong. He's a very strong guy. He's taking some great shots. He's got tough legs. And there's just not enough behind the punch. That's it for Gerard. If he could punch, this would be some fight. And Mitchell knows it. He's in complete command. He's dancing around. Just waiting for the moment. He just got Mitchell with a shot. And another left hook, too. But again, they're not big shots. And even they're not big shots, they're points. Mitchell's being lazy. He's not putting it on. The other guy's giving 110 percent. The other guy's giving everything he's got, everything he knows. He's doing what he almost did against Lyles. He, he told us that he he hadn't been focused in the uh, start of the Lyles fight. And he seems to be losing some concentration, some focus. He fights in spurts. I break, break, like he back, feels one back, punch break. is going to end this anyway. Why bother? And he sometimes he's a wake-up call, which he got. He got banged in the eye. And it really swelled up his eye against Lyles, and all of a sudden he had this sense of urgency, and he came alive. Maybe that's what he needs here. I remember not the exact same right corner right per right se, right but we right carries in Kali Rahilu's corner talking about you got to let Frank Rana burn himself out and then take over, and he went on to win that title. So who knows? They have a similar plan, but can Gerard do it? 
That's another Louis Zachary Spider. He's one of the most prominent manager trainers in France. He's got Rahi Lou, Jean Mendy, Laurent Putwani, and this guy, Bruno Girard. He always has tough guys. They're not always the most skilled. And they don't always have the greatest power, but they're tough. Nice double left hook by Girard. Again, not with the power that Mitchell displays, but a nice crisp combination. And he's making things a little bit interesting here. He's standing in there. He's exchanging. And he got staggered a little bit there. He got yeah, he, he got shot back for his trouble. Right, he started to come in. Quickly, Whoops. Quickly, they closed quickly, the door and quickly. slammed it right in his face. Now Mitchell's got to come in this way. Now Mitchell's got to come in this way. The fans chanting Byron getting behind him. A short, crisp right hook there by Mitchell. Missing with the uh, ensuing shots. Mitchell missed four winging shots. He's not straightening his punches out. He's not taking them clean. You ought to know better than that. You ought to know better than those four missed shots. Keep him up, keep him up, Gerard's got his rooting section off to our left. The folks from France, including his mom, has to be feeling a little bit better about things after those rounds in which uh, he had a bloodied face. Mitchell and just just joined the fight again. This, this round, he just joined it again. He left up. for a couple of rounds. Yep. Keep him up, okay? Keep him up. All right, let's go. Bop. A caution from Elmo Adolph to keep the punches up to Byron Mitchell. A little peppering by uh, Bruno Girard. Girard with a cut. Bad cut along the uh, side of the head. Well, here we see they're in tight, but as they pull out, watch Girardi takes a nice little left hook up here. They come back with a double left hook. Both of them hit Mitchell clean as they break, but he doesn't have Mitchell type power. The first one comes right around, lands right on the inside, but in the second one, you see they're just too soft. Clean, but soft. And soft sometimes just doesn't get it done. He ducking underneath. Effective so for points, underneath. but he's Pull not doing up. damage. He's, he's not debilitating Mitchell. Give him he's not causing him any underneath. severe pain, that's for sure. All right, stay busy. Work the jab, work the jab from the outside. Stay down with the jab. Okay. Don't know. Stay busy. Stay Johnny busy. Trawick stay in the corner. I was surprised when uh, he didn't have stay his uh, trainer, Jimmy yeah. Williams, from the uh, title victory fight. He changed trainers to Johnny Trawick. There have been no knockdowns thus far in the fight which is a testament to the heart and chin and guts of the Frenchman in green, Bruno Girard, because he's he's uh, taken a lot of heat. For all the punches Bruno Girard has taken, his eyes still look clear, and he's still throwing punches. Yeah, no, the bloody nose is not a big deal. It's red and it looks ugly, but it's not a real big deal. He does not look that bad. He's just having a problem with that runny bloody nose. Aesthetically, not looking so hot uh, with all the blood. But he continues to press forward. If he had more power, oh, straight right hand right on the head of Byron Mitchell. Mitchell had to feel that a little bit. You have to see as he presses forward, is the only time that he capitalizes when Mitchell drops his hands and misses. He can't do it going backwards. He's not a big puncher coming forward as it is. Going backwards, he's almost like a paperweight. Mitchell has to press. When he presses him, he's taking his fight completely. Mitchell just takes takes off too much time. He lacks focus, concentration. Look at this flurry by Gerard. Again, weren't powerful punches, but they got in there. And he's looking to steal another round. Well, you know what? He's chasing Mitchell around right now. Mitchell's not being very effective while he's moving. Mitchell flashes the jab, doesn't follow it up with a right. Well, they told him to jab in the corner. He's doing that. He's, he's jabbing. He's, told him he's doing, but he's got to follow with the right hand. Let's go. Break it clean. Step back. Step back. Break. Hey, maybe Mitchell in his head says, I can turn it on whenever I want. <laughs> but that's not a good uh, philosophy. Well, I guarantee if you say that to your trainer, he'll say, then why don't you turn it on? Yeah. No, nobody says hang around because let's see what the decision's going to be. If you can do it, do it. Get out of here. <laughs> First 
very difficult to go through life as a fighter just looking for that one big shot. Loading up. And it seems like that also may be in the mind of Mitchell. Mitchell's eating some leather here. Some nice clean shots. And Mitchell's head turning a lot more than it was before. As you get a little tired, the fatigue will make a coward of you, as Vince Lombardi once told us. Here's another three, four punch combination. Beautiful right uppercut, but just one and done for Mitchell. Bruno Gerard is winning this round. Final 10 seconds. Great finish by Gerard. He's outworking Mitchell. He's outworking him for the round. Boy, they've got to be a lot happier in that Bruno Gerard corner now after that sixth round. We've got Natalie translating for Bruno Gerard and the corner. Sit down, Bruno. You see what I said to you? Three, four rounds. Now you are okay. You remember what I said to you at the gym? I told you. You have to follow like you are doing. There's a nice overhead look at what's going on on the inside. Gerard on the inside, not a real big punch again, but there's right hand, left hook, another right hand, another left, and he's landing punches as he stuffs Byron Mitchell. He throws another one, two, three, and he lands two of the three. That is scoring, not big, but scoring. Well, let's see what kind of uh, reaction Byron Mitchell has as we begin the seventh round. This is scheduled for 12 for the WBA Super Middleweight Championship. Mitchell just being uh, too laid back, uh, not focused, too cautious here. We had many opportunities to take Gerard out and did not. Well, through six, midway point, they've got Mitchell ahead 4-2. You guys? 4-2. I have it 4-2. I gave the fourth and sixth rounds to Gerard, and he's starting out this round well. The fans, uh, well, they gave Gerard four and six, too. A much more confident uh, Frenchman, Bruno Gerard, now coming forward, continues to come forward. No, 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 this, this fight. Don't try. Let's go break it. Now they tie each other up. See, on the inside, Byron Mitchell should be working. He's a slightly shorter reach, a little better leverage to the ground on the inside, work the inside. Well, there's al always a, a chance that Mitchell came in underestimating Bruno Girard when he looked at his uh, record. And uh, he's reacting that way in this fight. I think he fought a little too hard, a little too early, missed some big shots, loaded up with too many shots, and now he's paying the price for it a little bit. The Frenchman just lost his mouthpiece. Gerard just dropped his mouthpiece. Yeah. Elmo Adolf picks it up. A tremendous shot. Time, says Elmo Adolf. You know what's interesting? Uh, Mitchell told us, he said, you know, I've heard Gerard studied seven fights of mine. In none of those tapes did he see my jab. Well, we're not seeing much of Mitchell's jab here either. He thought that would be like his secret weapon. And it's not happening. And Mitchell does have a powerful jab. They both have good jabs. Gerard's again, more for setting punches up and getting a little bit of points. Well, Mitchell can stuff your jab and hurt you, and he's not doing it. Here comes Gerard again. All right, let's go, let's go. Get out. And fatigue starting to set in for both guys. More for Mitchell. Mitchell's looking more weary and more like, uh, oh, this is no fun anymore. It's extremely warm in here. We're in uh, the Grand Casino. Event center in Tunica, Mississippi. You want two, Steve? I'm hot. <laughs> yeah, I'm being uh, diplomatic. It is very, it's really, really hot. Now. Under these TV lights, you can imagine what this is like. There's again two big shots by Mitchell that he missed, and he doesn't need to do that. Takes the same energy to stop a big shot that you missed, and he got counted on four or five times, yes. six, seven times by Gerard. Gerard continues to pepper Byron Mitchell in the head. He's out working him. That puck to the jaw by Gerard. He's going to win another round. Mitchell looking weary. Mitchell looking weary. Incredible as it may seem. Gerard is getting close to evening up this fight, and there's a lot of time to go. We're only in the uh, end of the seventh. You know, early in the round, Mitchell took a lot of the early rounds, so it's a very close round. 
Well, if you give that one to Gerard, it's 4 3, Mitchell. To work that jab, work that jab, work that jab. Don't get away from the jab. They back down with the jab. He sides, you can hit it with that jab. And then on the inside, bang his body with combinations. Back to his head. Yeah, but he ain't tying you up sometimes because you're getting off on him good. You're getting off on him good. So I'm saying, just, just, just keep working. Keep working. Don't keep working. When you bang that body with a, when, when you bang that body with a combination, step, step around. Bam, 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 step around. Don't be right there in the middle for him to counter you. Bam, 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 step around. That's on the inside. On the outside, stay down with the jab. That's the key, and everything work behind the jab. See so what I'm saying? You can hit him with a left hook, too, whenever you ready. You more left hooks at you, all right? All right. All right. Hey, Johnny Trawick in the corner of Byron Mitchell, Bobby. I'll tell you what. He said, Byron Mitchell said to Johnny, he said, I'm tired, man, I'm tired. He said, I know you're tired, but he's tired, too. That's not something you want to hear as a trainer when no. they go back to the corner. Not, a, not enough of a sense of urgency, too. And, and in the other corner, they look like they're just celebrating VE Day. They say, we got us fight. We just keep the pressure up the guy. It's, come, it's folding. Until Frankie Lyles, Mitchell had never gone past eight rounds. Well, we're now into round eight. And he talked about it very candidly. He said, I was very frustrated by the fact that I was nervous. I might not be able to go to distance as well. I was holding punches. It was on my mind. It had me crazy. Now I'm comfortable. I knocked Frankie out in 11. But he doesn't look comfortable. Seems like he he's look reverted. This is only the third time in his career that he's gone past eight. This is 21st pro fight. He's got to quit trying to one-shot him and fight him. He's got to sit here and out punch him, and he's not doing that. Well, the problem he's waiting is that, that one punch. He has a fatigue problem, as we heard in the corner, and I'm tired, and I'm tired. When you start out punching, he doesn't go down. You're dead. <laughs> well, that's a fact. We said earlier he may have underestimated Bruno Girard. May have thought that his overwhelming power could be the answer, uh, but it is not right as of yet. And now, uh, exhaustion is setting in. And you find a guy that just fought six round fights and has no knockouts. I mean, you, you, you have to get a little. I mean, come on, overconfident. He's been 10 rounds a couple of times. We're talking about Bruno Gerard. 10 round once, 12 rounds once. That's yep. it. Not a lot to Not a lot. on from strength. But he looks the stronger of the two and the uh, better conditioned of the two, Bruno Gerard. And the more active, he's making the fight, he's carrying the fight, he's doing the punchy. All right, they're not hard punches, all right, most of them not landing, but he's doing the fight. The other guy's just sitting back waiting for that one shot. You, these are points he's building up, Dylan. These are points. And he's, he's the effective aggressor, one of the biggest keys for judging a fight, the effective aggressor. Look at that, three more punches on the chin. Not big shots, but shots. As we know, very difficult to take the title away from a champion, but uh, after this round, he could uh, be even he with keeps Byron Mitchell. He keeps this up, this round is his, and now they're even. Well, I had the last round of draws, Mitchell dominated early, but it looked like a bit of the last hurrah, because I don't see any more fluent flurries in Mitchell's repertoire. He just doesn't seem to have them now. When was the last time he really threw an effective punch? Maybe rounds ago. Fight out, fight out, fight out, fight out. And it's been uh, all Bruno Gerard. Not, not saying that uh, his power is anything great, but he's more active. It's not power, it's desire, it's determination. Look at that. Look at that. And condition. And condition. It's what makes one man better than another on a given night. Gerard smothering the champion at the end of the round. Another one in the bank for Gerard. So this fight could be even, and Mother Gerard has to be feeling a lot better about things. She just she just ordered a croissant with cheese and ham, so she must be feeling good. Well, she's trying not to look, but she has to be uh, hearing from the reaction that her son's doing better. Natalie, take it away. telling him to feel like he was doing at the gym. Not to be anxious, to follow like he was doing in the before round. Each round, you can become a champ. You cannot let him breathe. 
Allez, Bruno, le premier, allez Well, that's exactly what he's doing, and now let's see if... Oh, she can't look. She just can't look. Bruno Gerard's mother flying in from France along with the uh, contingent of people. You can hear them chanting and singing in the background. You know, when my brothers fought in the amateurs and I was there to room on, it was harder to watch them than do the actual fight. Absolutely. The heart, you die a thousand little tiny deaths. Yep. So tough on family and friends. All right, Gerard, once again coming forward. We begin round nine. What a let comeback go, by Bruno go, Gerard, right, but Byron go. Mitchell, his own worst but, enemy, is just letting up too much. You know, it's a shame to say this, but this was an easy fight if you draw it up based on the skills I know Mitchell has, the power he has. That comes uh, Mitchell here for a moment, Bobby. Good four clean shots. He hurt Gerard pretty good. All of a sudden, he gets a wake-up call. The adrenaline flows. No, 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 all right, continues to hang tough, comes in. Mitchell tries an uppercut. More active here by Byron Mitchell, maybe getting a second win all of a sudden. Yeah, I think he got the message in the, in the corner and a second win. He, he's loafed through the last three or four. He can, he can put together a good round and, and get back on the road here. And I watch the tapes of Gerard. I know Mitchell. I watch tapes of Mitchell, plus I've watched him fight in person. This was a whole lot easier fight than he let it be. He made it be a difficult fight. And I'll tell you what, he may pay dearly for it with his title. I don't think there's any question he took the French challenger too lightly. There you go. There you go. Plus lack of focus and conditioning. Good body shot right there by Mitchell. Mitchell's been hammering body shots. He just stops fighting, like right here. He just stops. Punch it, Punch it, he's done enough, now he's got a rest around. Continues to fight in spurts. There's that jab we heard about. Powerful jab, but he's not doing it often enough. And then Gerard comes in and smothers it. And those body shots are building up points for him. They're hard. <laughs> now he's upset. He looks over. Elmo Adolf does Mitchell. He felt he was being headbutted. And held. And held. No, he was being held by one hand and punched him. There you go. There's the overhand right by Mitchell, but what an answer, a combination by Gerard. Gerard comes back with three punches, and Mitchell with just one. See, there's three or four to Mitchell's one. He makes, he makes Mitchell Mitch with a big loaded up left hook. Mitchell's got to throw clean cutoff punches, and by cutoff I mean that when he misses, he cuts it off in the air. He doesn't just swing through it and make himself more tired. And while these punches by Gerard aren't that heavy, you have to wonder about the accumulative effect. They could be getting to Mitchell. And there's the bell who went around nine. Man, how do you score that one? I scored it for Mitchell. He landed the harder punches to the body and he, he took the whole first part of the run. You got to stay busy. We got to get this guy out of there. Okay? You got to stay busy. Don't let him outwork it. You outwork him. You out working, be busy. Be busy in there. See what I'm saying? Ooh. Be busy. What? Be busy. Jab, jab. Inside, bang that body and look for that uppercut inside. He's open for it. And, and throw the on the outside, I want I want each each and knee. Each each and knee. I want the one-two. You hit him with a beautiful one-two combination. Let's try that some more. Alright? Right hand behind the, behind the left jab. And left hand. One, two. Each each and knee. Each each and knee. Try that. Sometimes triple up on it. Each each and knee. See what I'm saying? Right hand behind the jab. The jab sets it up, okay? From the outside. Inside, bang that body back to the head. My feet. My feet. My feet. Well, to borrow the title of a program on Showtime, this is a rude awakening for Byron Mitchell. The unknown Bruno Gerard is now giving Byron Mitchell a lot of trouble. I'm sure the champ thought that, you know, his victory over Frankie Lyles could propel him into the upper echelon of the super middleweight to fighters. Right, especially take a fighter who doesn't have a punch. Beautiful body shot by Mitchell, but he got caught three shots to the chin. There's a right hand, a left hook, two body shots. Gerard is just going for broke here. He's using heart and the will to win to try and will the title away from Byron Mitchell. How do you think this performance by Mitchell would have stacked up against a Frankie Lyles? He never beats Frankie Lyles in fights like this. First of all, he wouldn't have had the energy to go through the end and he wouldn't have been able to absorb. Frankie Lyles hits a lot harder than Gerard. Mitchell is trying real hard now. He's a lot more active. He almost slipped with a punch. 
But at least he was throwing a bunch of punches at the time, which is what he hasn't been doing what they want him to do. There's that stiff jab by Mitchell. Mitchell's obviously tired, fatigued. He even said so a couple of rounds ago. In the corner, it was the trainer, Johnny Trawick. But look how uh, active, I mean, this Frenchman's like an octopus. He's all over Mitchell. He'll just keep throwing, Steve. That's one of the things that European fighters do, is they get in great shape and they make sure the punches are being thrown. Can't win if you're not punching. If only he had some power. He's only got five knockouts in 39 fights. At this level, you can be pretty sure he's not going to stop too many guys with that lack of power. This is a tough round to score. The Frenchman's come back real hard. He's continuing. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, an, an overhand right there by uh, Byron Mitchell. But, but the, the guy comes back with 16 slapping punches. Yep, here comes Gerard again. There goes a mouthpiece. Who's is it? I think it's Gerard. And I think it's Mitchell's. You could be right. I think it's the referee. Keep your punches up. Keep your punches up. Let's go. All right, let's break it. Gerard may have spit it out on purpose. Yep, it is. You were right, Bobby. Well, it sure, quick. we'll buy him some time. You cannot breathe through his nose, no, 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 no. gentlemen. He's got a lot of let's trouble go. trying to suck the air right through his mouth. Right mouthpiece okay, gets hit go. when your mouth is open with an uppercut. That mouthpiece will disappear. Down it went. So they clean it off, they throw it back in, and we resume. But that was a battle that was going on there of trading punches. They were giving and, and uh, throwing equally. Here's Gerard doing some running, something we haven't seen for quite a while. Let's go, let him go, let him go, Byron. Let him go, Byron. Let's go, let's go. Break it. Final seconds of round 10. Not many people thought we'd be this deep into the fight, particularly Byron Mitchell. And me. Yes. I didn't think we'd go this far, I must admit. Bruno Gerard had other ideas. Gerard again opens up here at the end of the round. Mitchell missing repeatedly. We'll have Natalie step in here and do our translating in the French corner. Sit down, Bruno. You are going to be world champion. Okay? You have to win 11 and 12. Short and sweet. Mitchell likes to whip his punches in. Watch this whipping overhand right. He turns on it, whips it in. Right on the ear and the temple. But here comes the Frenchman. One punch, doesn't land back. And he threw a few more. And a little while later, as we're talking about, while his mouth is open, he gets hit on the inside. I'm not sure where the uppercut comes in. Oh, he just he just spits it out. Clearly not a punch, but he was throwing punches and landing. Maybe he just needs to breathe. I think what you said was right. He can't breathe through his nose. The mouthpiece is in the way. He needs his breath. He spits it out. We are in the championship causeway, gentlemen. 11 and 12. This fight's up for grabs. And Byron Mitchell, the champion, has simply let the challenger light hitting Bruno Gerard back into this fight. It wasn't about skill and it wasn't about power. It was about conditioning and guts. Yep. Will to win. And Byron Mitchell uh, finding out the hard way. This will be uh, certainly a learning experience. If he can hold on and win, he could chalk it up as a learning experience and hopefully take something from this. Very difficult way to learn the lesson. It though. sure is. Guys. Yep. Especially if you lose. Well, let's not forget to remind our audience that that's our opinion. <laughs> there are three judges here that may have clearly a different opinion. Years ago, Hugo Carr was out boxing. You know what the firm just ran out of gas? And he just out banged. Well, the folks at home are uh, seeing it for Bruno Gerard. How do you like that after 10 rounds? I, the I have it dead even, so they could well be right. I, I have, have a one point for Mitchell, Let's go. five, Break four, it. and one even. Break it. Break. These are critical rounds, these last two. In the championship round, so here's where it counts. Let's see what happens from this point on. This is a test of character. Gerard chasing Mitchell around. Continues to be on the offense. Let's go, let's go, let's punch. Let's get a net punch. This kid from France is in tremendous shape. See, there's just three little shots on the inside. Here, Mitchell tries to come back, but 
before and just been one or two and done. A lot of those big ones that Mitchell has thrown, you'll miss it. We come up to the final minute of round 11. Oh, that's a hard hook. Byron, Byron Mitchell had some round 11 magic in his title victory over Frankie Lyles. He may need some here. Well, I'll tell you what, he's thrown some bigger shots again here in the 11th round. Much better in the last couple of rounds. And landing them. But not as many as he may need to to continue winning the round. He knocked down Lyles three times to stop the fight in the last one in the 11th round. Here's that whipping right hand that you described earlier by Mitchell, but having not much effect. And here's another whipping right hand that clearly missed. Little punches and combinations on the inside. Gerard refusing to go, go punches, away quietly. Punch he just stands right in there and trades with there. Mitchell. The, the pesky Bruno Gerard. Look how active Gerard is. Look how many punches he throws. He lost a round right there. That's where Mitchell took it. The end of the 11th. Wow. What a fight. Right at the end of the round, you can see a bad cut by the right eye of Gerard. Was that the left eye? Left eye. Left eye. I think they banged heads on that early inside. That's a long gash. On the inside, there's no quitting the French. When he fires right back, there's a nice right hand. He got caught. Staggers him back. He comes right back with four or five more combinations. Stumbles back again. Here comes Mitchell in to try and do something with that move, but the Frenchman is going nowhere. Here from the overhead. I think they bang heads in here somewhere. Yep. And right as he goes back, Bobby. Right here, you'll see there's a nice right hand. Now, now watch this. Throw. There's the head. There. Right there. Well, here we go. 12th and final round. They touch gloves. Could be very difficult for Gerard to come down here to the Mississippi Delta and bring a decision back to France. Let's see how it works out. It's all up in Mitchell's hands. If Mitchell wants to press the attack here, he can keep his title. If not, he can lose it. Gerard once again opens up, pouring it on, just peppering the head of Byron Mitchell to begin the 12th round. No knockdowns. Right now, it's just a bit. Oh, oh, Gerard with a big right and then follows it with a left hand. Best punch of the night for Gerard. That was a good right hand. Got a lot of flesh with that one. He stood his ground. Another right hand left hook. Look at the will of this Frenchman. Just stands right in there. Byron Mitchell's firing back. Right now, mostly arm punches. It's going to take it off a lot to put G Gerard down. Let's go, let's go, back up. Let's go, break it. I mean, he's punching from memory as Mitchell. Those aren't even hard punches anymore. He's like exhausted, but I got to do this. He's got to do it or else he's going to lose this round. The freshman bloodied just doesn't give up. Key here for Mitchell to keep pushing forward. If he goes backwards, he's in trouble. Beautiful left uppercut there. The Frenchman still outworking Mitchell. Mitchell still landing harder shots. Gerard continues to throw more punches than the champion. They're just not hard enough. And then all of a sudden, neither are Mitchell's. Mitchell's not throwing those hard punches anymore. He's throwing the same kind of battle ball. He's got to get back on. Mitchell exhausted, but a good right uppercut by Mitchell to the chin. Mitchell's got to suck it up. It's right now. It's right now where this title's on the line. There's another three punch, four punch combination. Coming back with two or three more punches by the Frenchman. These little flurries when you're just tired are so big. Just rattling Mitchell's head back and forth, side to side. 50 seconds left. Could Gerard win this fight on points and take the title back to France? He's out gutting Mitchell. He's out gutting him. There's no two ways about it. He wants to win much more. He's got the will to win. What a tremendous effort by the Frenchman. Tremendous heart. A colossal performance from a guy that wasn't supposed to even give a good Frenchman's winning the last round, and this is all Mitchell's fault. 
I think early in the fight, his mindset and his strategy. This guy's already won in his head. I don't know if he's won the fight. Final 10 seconds. And he wants to end it with a flourish, Gerard. Well, we don't know what's going on in the heads of the judges or how they scored this. Well, there's Gerard's mom. But Bruno Gerard may have won this fight on points. He certainly won it in the hearts of the audience. I have it a draw point by point, but if I wasn't keeping score and I was just sitting in the audience, I think the French won. I mean, I'm keeping it round by round. I can't help it. It's a draw. This is one of those very few fights where I say to you a draw is not a bad decision. I thought some of the really big bombs early and halfway through the fight gave a slight edge to Gerard. I had one round even, and I gave Gerard the fight by one, excuse me, I gave Mitchell the fight by one point. When we get back to revisiting the keys and early on, Gerard used his jab to his folks and jabs points quickness and getting inside. Mitchell did not. He didn't use it for points. He didn't use it for power. He went to winging big shots. Straight right hand, he didn't use it. He whipped it and looped it. And to step up on the inside and work the body, he did none of those things. He really didn't. Gerard did what he was supposed to do. He, he kept the pressure on, and then he did the repressure. Pressure on pressure. Step back in. It was it was key for Gerard that, that probably Mitchell didn't train well because I still think Mitchell had the ability to outgun him and outgut him all the way across. Let me give you the judges' names. They are Fred Steinweiner the third from Biloxi, Mississippi, Oriel Aguilera from Columbia. Samuel Verouet from New York. Mitchell did not do what he was supposed to. He didn't set the big shots up. He didn't take his time. He didn't work in behind the jab and set up the big combinations. He just looked to lead with big bombing shots and take his man out. He really didn't stick to the game plan that he was supposed to use what I thought. He can't be but disappointed even if he wins here. Absolutely. You know, it's a, it's almost a shame that they don't have a French judge also. I mean, you know, hey, let, let's face it, this guy's got two American judges and one Colombian judge. Ain't it fair? I mean, you know, one from one side and one from the other. Because you tend to do to become nationalistic when it gets too close. Well, Gerard and his mom await the decision. Gerard's first fight in the United States, his first world title shot, even if he loses, his stock goes up. What an unlikely looking fighter and what a gutty great performance he gave tonight. Really nice nice fight. We're waiting a long time for this uh, decision. As they add up the points so momentarily we'll throw it up to uh, Jimmy Lennon Junior. to get the word. Anxious moments here for both fighters and the crowd very quiet here all of a sudden almost completely silent as it's they wait the decision. It's one of these fights were almost. I just a second, Bobby. I just wish it's a draw. I hope so. Could be. I don't want to go home and lose any sleep tonight over there. It could be a draw. This would be one of the few where a draw wouldn't bother me at all. At all. I'd almost prefer it. Well, I got a draw dead. Well, if it is, of course, Mitchell uh, retains the title. Well, it's a uh, nervous time here in uh, Tunica, Mississippi, uh, as we await the decision. He was tough. Yeah, he, he was tough. <laughs> Very anxious there. It's got to be obviously it's very close because it seems like they're double checking and triple checking the scores. That's why it's taking so long. That's what we have. Byron Mitchell after a bleak start uh, rather Gerard after a bleak start came on very strong. The fans at home think he won it. Jimmy Lennon Jr. Uh, scurrying trying to get the scorecards there and that little crowd in the ring is Don King the promoter of these uh, fights here tonight. You know some of those rounds are really so close that yep. imagine it one round switched from A to B. Now let's go. Jimmy's ready. Swing. Jimmy's ready. Let's or is he? Draw. Or is he? So we're just about set to finally get the word. Let's throw it up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards with a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judging ringside, Uriel Aguilera scores about 115 to 113 in favor of Girard. 
Judge at ringside, Sam Virouet scores about 116 to 114 in favor of Byron Mitchell. <laughs> Judge at ringside, Fred Steinwinder the third scores about 114 to 114, even a draw. The decision is a split draw, and the champion retains his title. That's a split draw. I'm almost happy. Maybe we, play, we prayed too much. I mean, hey, we got the, we got what we prayed for, draw, a split draw. At least they go home thinking, well, one judge thought we won it 115, 113. That was uh, we'll be Maria Aguilera from we'll Colombia. He had Gerard up 115, 113. Verouet had it 116, 114. Mitchell and Steinwinder had it a draw, 114. And uh, Mitchell retains the title on a draw, but does it the hard way. Not exactly what he had in mind here tonight. Let's go over to Jim Gray. Jim. All right, thank you very much. Byron, do you feel as though you were worthy of a draw tonight? Well, he was tougher than I expected. Um, I can't take any away from the guy, anything away from him. He was, he's a great uh, number one contender. He's a great contender, and he's going to have a future, but not tonight. Did you take him too lightly? Were you totally I focused? Think, I think uh, I was relying on my power a little too much in, in, in cases. Um, he kept me off balance a, a few times there, and I couldn't get off like I would have liked to. But, um, you know, like I say, you got to. You got to come in, and you have to come in into the champ hometown, and you have to convincingly beat him. Well, uh, enough about convincingly. Your assessment was that you won this fight, or that this fight well, was a draw. Course, you know, you think the, you won. The judge's decision is the judge's decision. You know, whether I feel like I won or not, uh, if I think it was a shutout, you know, whether I think you know. He, it was a great call. You know, I have to respect the judge's decision. It seemed as though after the third round that he took control of this fight. You had control early. Then it seemed as though he, he just had you going backwards the rest of the time. No, I wouldn't say that. But he did uh, keep me off balance because after I, I had him, I felt like I had him hurt a couple times, and I was trying to get him out of there. And um, I was loading up too much instead of, you know, just – Working my sharp shots like I, you know, I worked on. Instead of looking forward, you had hoped maybe to chase Roy Jones or, or, or move on from this, fight one of the two Germans. Now what? Would you like to fight him again? Uh, if, it, if Don King's call, calls for it, it you know, I'm, I'm down with DK. You know, all right, let's all bring in Gerard for his assessment. Gerard, if we can get some help from Natalie. Gerard, Bruno. Let's, do you feel as though you won the fight? Natalie will translate. Est-ce que tu penses que tu as gagné ce combat Il n'y a aucun problème. Je suis, je suis sûr d'avoir gagné ce match. C'est un scandale. Je, je, je suis venu aux états unis j'ai pas eu peur. Je suis un Français qui va aux états unis ça, ça fait plus peur. Et je suis venu pour gagner. I'm a, I'm a French fighter, I come here because I trust everybody here, but it's a scandal because I win that fight. You thought you won the fight outright Est-ce que tu penses que la décision n'est pas bonne Tout à fait, c'est même sûr et certain. J'ai gagné, c'est sûr et certain. For him, he won that fight and he won easy by eight rounds to four, maybe, but he won. If you if you fought him in France, do you feel as though you would have received the decision? Est-ce que si tu avais fait ce même combat en France, en France ou en Europe, tu penses que tu aurais eu la décision ce soir? C'est certain. On a vu qu'il y avait un petit problème au niveau des juges, au niveau de ramasser les bulletins. C'est bizarre, c'est tout. Les bulletins sont loin à ramasser. Il y a eu un petit problème. C'est plus que bizarre. En France, il n'y aurait pas eu de problème. J'aurais gagné logiquement puisque j'ai gagné. Donc il n'y aurait eu aucun problème. Uh, for sure, if that fight was in France or in Europe, I'm sure I will uh, have the decision. I can see that during the fight, uh, so it was very slow. For the decision, it was very slow. So I don't know, but for sure, I, I want that fight in France. And, and, and what are your plans now? Quel, quels sont tes projets Rematch? maintenant? C'est facile. C'est facile de dire en revanche, alors je me suis fait voler. Mais bon, euh, il y a qu'à venir en France, on verra. Well, it's easy to speak about a rematch, you know, but I don't want to speak about a rematch because I won that fight. So maybe I can invite Byron Mitchell to come in France and to make a defense of his title in France. Finally, you can tell your mom the fight's over. She can watch now. She wasn't able to watch you tonight. Uh, ils ont vu que ta maman pendant tout le combat, elle a pas regardé le combat, donc ils voulaient dire que maintenant ta maman elle peut te regarder. Que... Ouais, mais elle est déçue. J'ai perdu. 
Well, she's very disappointed because she thinks that uh, her son w won that fight. Well, she really didn't see it, but I'm sure that's how she feels. Thank you. Congratulations to you on a great fight. Steve?